Yeah, I'm just, like, I'm really operating on faith. Like, I have faith that God is going to put me wherever I need to be. If it's working a part-time job and putting the rest of my energy into a YouTube channel. I don't know, but I just know that I'm so glad that I was willing to take the steps to find my happiness, to be happy. And I didn't let fear stop me. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so if you're new to my channel, my name is Dominique, aka Legally Bomb. And as you can tell from the title, probably, yes, I quit my job. Um, before we get into this video, if you have not watched my post-grad um, video or my vlog of my last day at work, I suggest going to watch those before you watch this one. Because um, it will give you a little bit more insight of my background or of my life I guess you could say um but I will I can insert um little cards that you can just click. okay so today was my last day at work um I started this job in October of 2016 I am in Kansas City Missouri and I moved here from Charlotte North Carolina for this job and so yeah I started it in October 2016 um and today April 4th 2018 was my last day so what led me to quit my job? So let's start to before I even um, before I even got here, before I even got to Kansas City. I had just graduated from college. I didn't know what I wanted to do and I just felt like, okay, I'm supposed to get a job and have a salary, have benefits, like that's the right thing to do. Um, not realizing that it would have been better to take the time to actually figure out what I wanted to do. I was just in such a rush to be grown, to be an adult. And I took the first thing that was offered to me, basically. And before I moved here, one of my friends, she kind of had the same, same experience. At that time, she was transitioning out of her job. And she said, she was like, you know, is this what you want to do? Like, I know what it's like to be unhappy in a job, but it's not fun. And in my heart, in my gut, I knew I didn't want to take this job. But I took it. Um, and so I just told her, I was like, you know, I think I can make it work. You know, I'm supposed to be traveling 80 to 100%. I can make it work. I can do this. I can have this job. So fast forward, we get to the job. Um, I'm trying to think, when did I start just not feeling it? I don't think, I don't know. I don't think there was ever a day that I actually enjoyed what I did. Um... What my job does is when you go to the hospital and you get checked in by the nurses or when your doctors are charting your results, um, when you go to physical therapy and they're charting your results, my job creates those programs for hospitals. So they create um, medical software, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, so at my job, you work on a specific solution, meaning you work for a specific area like you could work for the ER solution you could work for the women's health solution um I didn't work for any of those my solution was more back end than it was front end but that's neither here nor there so again there was never a time I can recall that I loved my job that I would wake up and just be like oh my goodness I love my job this does not feel like work no every day felt like work every day felt like a task I'm trying to think what I don't know when like the turning point that made it just like unbearable for me because there came a point when it was literally unbearable like I would email my manager like with bogus excuses I mean they made sense but like n nothing was happening to me I just could not get out of bed or it was just a sh I couldn't go to I couldn't do work that day like I just couldn't do it and so um and then if I did go to work um, and I wasn't like like calling out of work every day no it wasn't like that but if I did go to work I was crying at work I would go to the bathroom cry go to my car I would cry um I would cry on the way to work um I would call my mom when I got home and cry I would sit in the dark <laughs> and just be so miserable like I mean I don't I can't say I was depressed because I don't know what that what that looks like. I don't know what that is and I don't want to, you know, um, self-diagnose myself with a serious illness that I know people actually deal with. 
So I can't say it was depression. I don't know. But I mean, it may well could have been. I'm not sure. But I just know it was so bad. Like, I, I just can't even put into words how miserable I felt. Like, I would call my mom. And it's not like I was crying, like, like a little sniffle, a little tear here or there. No, I was boo-hooing, crying. Like, on the phone with my mom, boo-hooing, crying. And it was hard for her to hear me um, crying like that because I don't cry. First of all, I don't really cry a lot. Or if I do cry, it's not in front of my mom because my mom is very protective of me. So I tried my hardest to like mask it away from her. And she would be like, um, Dominique, you know, just get up and just, you know, go do this. And I was like, Mom, I literally can't. I cannot. And I just couldn't put into words. I couldn't help her understand what was wrong with me because I just knew I couldn't do it. I just felt like I couldn't do anything. I, I knew I wasn't going to be happy until I was no longer employed at my job. That's all I knew. And so, um, so fast forward, this probably was during the summertime, like June, July. And then also during that time, I had a very bad, like, allergic reaction to braiding hair and it, like my skin was bad and my hair was bad I was having bald spot and I was probably stressed so that probably didn't help my hair it was just a lot like oh it was a lot and mind you I'm in Kansas City by myself like I mean I know people here but like my friends my family are all in North Carolina so um it was just so hard like man it was so hard I could just remember me crying and just being so sad like I would spend my weekends in the house I would not do anything because that was the only day that I didn't have to go to work and I did not want to use that time and be outside of my house I just uh, I, I didn't want to do that so okay so I I don't know what changed for me to be okay at work, but something changed now. It became a little bit more bearable. I still hated it. So, um, also, I used to tell my mom, like, Mom, I'm quitting today. Right now. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. She's like, Dominique, no, you are not. What are you going to do? I said, Mom, I don't know. I'll go get a job at Target. It can't be that hard. Like, that's how fed up I was. I mean, it sounds stupid now, but at the time, I was dead serious. Like, dead dead serious um so yeah fast forward to what happened towards the end of the year my, i knew i was gonna have to figure out what i wanted to do with my lease in february so a little bit before february i got to thinking i was like, okay first i was like okay i'll move to texas because i've always wanted to live in texas i didn't um my lease is about to be up so okay boom i moved to texas there's a problem with me moving to texas that didn't work out, and I'll explain it a little. I'll explain it later in the video. Um, I was like, okay, I'll move to Texas. That wasn't going to work. Um, then I said, okay, you know what? I'll stay in Kansas City, but I'll just find a new job. So that's what I did. I started focusing on looking for a new job in Kansas City. It wasn't working out. Hope. My lease was about to, like, the time for me to renew my lease was coming up. And I did, I knew I could not commit to another year in Kansas City. I knew that. Maybe I could do six months, but the rent was going to be, like, $50 more than what I already pay. And I, I, I wasn't going to give them $50 more. Not going to happen. And so, um, what happened next? So, looking for jobs in Kansas City. Nothing. I'm not getting, I got a couple interviews, but nothing was happening. So, I let that go. Then I was also like, why am I trying to force myself to stay in a city that I don't like? There's no point in that. So, I scratched it and I finally said, you know what? I don't know. I think I was like driving home or something. And it came to me. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to move back home. We're just going to move back home. And that was my final decision. So, how did I get to that decision? Number one. I could not move to Texas because I was so empty. Like, Kansas City, being here by myself, if y'all want a video about, like, moving, like, far away from your family, I'm not talking about two hours, I'm not talking about three hours. I live 13 hours away from my family, a $300 plane ride away from my family. If y'all want to know what that's like, let me know, and I'll record a video on that. But, um, it was hard. It was hard AF, like, 
oh it was so hard way harder than what I expected it to be so um yeah kids it being here I was emotionally empty like I needed to go home I needed to go home and just recharge myself and just refill myself with love with people that I that know me um I just need to be around my family I need to be around my friends again like before I go anywhere else I was like I have to go recharge basically so that's another reason why Texas was out of the question um why else did I decide to move home okay money I was not broke by any means I had money but I was an irresponsible spender. I always have been. I don't know why I'm like that. My mom tries to help me all the time, but I don't know. I just see stuff and I feel like I have to have it. And it's not like I was living like check to check, but it would be like I only had, um, I should have been, I say this, I should have been saving a lot more than what I saved. And I should, I was spending just too, I was just spending because I had it. Like, that's really the only reason why. Not even that I, the stuff that I was buying was what I needed. I just had it. So, I was like, why not get it? And so, um, that resulted in me, like, not being able to do stuff with my friends or not being able to go to this trip or, you know, just because I was spending ridiculously. Like, it was no need for me to be spending my money all willy-nilly. Like, no, it, I should have been a lot more responsible with my money than what I should have. So another reason why I'm going back home. When I live with my parents, I'll be able to save money. I pray to God that this lasts for at least till end of 2018. But I know it can be hard to transition from having your own place to living with somebody else. Um, but we're going to make it work for the pocket's sake. So I had to get my coins right. Okay, so how to get my spirit right, how to get my coins right. Being at home, it also gave me like a little leeway to actually figure out what I wanted to do. I did not, I do not want to go back to a job that I hate and that I'm like miserable at. Like I cannot do that again because I know how it feels to be unhappy and I never want to be there again. Never, ever, never, never, ever do I want to feel that way again. So... Being with my parents, it allows me to kind of feel my way around in this world and actually figure out what it is that I want to do. Like, what does Dominique like to do? I love making my video. I love making my videos. Um, but this does not make me any money right now. Um, I do not have the same 24 hours as somebody who makes YouTube videos full time. I just don't. You know, I work 9 to 5 on somebody else's dream. And while somebody who does, full who does YouTube full time... They work 9 to 5 or however long on their dream. They can record 3-4 videos in a day, you know, can produce a video every day. I mean, I could do that, but I like to sleep. I'm not going to, I'm not the type of person that's like, I sleep when I'm dead. You know, sleep is for the week. Well, I must be weak then because I'm going to always get my rest. Period, point blank, you know. And once I get home from work, I'm mentally exhausted. I'm tired. That only getting off work, I get home. 5 5:30. that leaves me I like to go to bed like 10 ish that leaves me four and a half hours to like do my face set up my camera my lighting um and record a video that's not a lot of time to I could maybe get one video done a day as somebody who you know makes YouTube who does YouTube for a living they can get three four videos done a day you know we just don't have the same 24 hours that other people do and it's it's okay, but you have, just like they created an opportunity for themselves, you got to create the opportunity for yourself. So what am I doing? I'm trying to create the opportunity for myself. So while I try to work on my um, YouTube channel and growing my channel, being more consistent, I'm going to have to find a job. I need some money, you know. So, but we'll figure that out. That'll come. I'm not worried. So in the process of me moving back home, I was, ve me quitting my job, first of all, I was so nervous like to tell my manager and just to take this step because I mean it is a big step like me going knowing that I'm gonna have a job that I'm gonna get a check twice a month you know I'm willing to give that up and that's a lot of people aren't willing to do that and I see that with I saw that with some people that I work with like they they let fear stop them and I feel like I let fear or whatever else stop me long enough. Like, how long are you? am I going to complain 
about something and not do anything about it. That doesn't make sense. You know, if you're unhappy, fix it. You don't know how to fix it, ask for help. So that's what I did. I fixed it. I did what I felt. I'm doing what I feel I need to do to fix it. To I feel like this is the right thing to do. So I quit my job. I put in my notice and things that I put in such a far notice because of the way my team is set up. I can get assigned projects, you know, at any time. And I didn't want to get assigned any more projects knowing that I was out the door. So that's why I gave way more than a two week notice. I think I gave like a six week notice. Um, but I was so I put in my notice. Things started to wind down at work, and you know things are things were finally like hitting me. Like I really did this. It didn't hit me until today when I was at work packing up my desk. Like it was like you really did it. Like if you watch my other video, you see me say like all I can say is like I did it. I did it. I did it. Cause like I don't know if I can describe to y'all how bad I felt. Like. I was down bad, man. I was down bad. You can ask my mom. She'll be here later. Maybe I'll ask her. Um, I was definitely down bad. And and I'm, and I'm like I said in my other video, this is not me telling you to just go and quit your job. Everybody does not have parents that are allowing them to lean on them. You know, everybody has to get it in different ways. You know, different things work for different people. What I'm saying in this is... Figure out what works for you. Figure out what you need to do to make you happy. If that means staying at your job and, you know, talking to your manager saying, I have too much on my plate. I need help. I need less responsibility. Or if it means I want more responsibility. Or if it means walking out the door. You know, you just have to figure out what works for you. But do not ever become stagnant. Do not ever let fear overtake you. We were not born with fear. We, that's not what God gave us. He didn't. He not put us on this earth to fear. And when people ask me, like, what am I doing next? I do not know. Like, I haven't, and I, that does not mean I have not, I've just been, you know, shooting, the, you know, just chilling. That's not what it means. I have not been just chilling. Like, I have been applying for jobs. Um, but I mean, I can't make somebody hire me. So, I'm doing what I need to do um, to try to get a job but I mean I, what, I can't do anything if nobody hires me another thing that I'm that I've learned in this process is that sometimes you just have to prepare yourself for where you want to be and I use this example a small example I wanted to go to broccoli fest I did it but I waited too long to get a ticket and they were all sold out so what did I do I still bought my transportation you know as if I did have a ticket Cause you know I'm just like okay God's gonna work it out for me. Mind you, this is just a concert, but I'm just trying to give you an example. I'm like, okay, God's gonna work it out for me. You know, I'm preparing myself for where I wanna be. He's gonna find me a ticket to Broccoli Fest. I found a ticket to Broccoli Fest a couple weeks ago. This girl's gonna let me buy her ticket to Broccoli Fest. So, like, you see how I say I prepared myself for where I wanted to be? I didn't say I don't have a ticket. I'm not gonna go, or I'm not gonna buy my transportation. No, I'm gonna still act and move as if I have. Um, a ticket to Broccoli Fest. So that's what I did. And with this situation, as it applies here, I do not have a job yet. But I'm still going to carry myself and do what I need to do to get out of this job. I'm not going to stay at, at my old job just because I, I don't have a job yet. That, that, if I would have did that, I would have been waiting forever. So, what did I do? I... Do I need to, I saved, started saving up my money. I stopped shopping because I knew. Ain't no telling how long you're going to be unemployed. I mean, not forever, but you just don't know. So, um, I started saving my money, you know. And then things just started falling into place, you know. I got some extra, um, I got my taxes back. That was a little extra coin in the pocket. Um, we, a part of my contract was that if I left before two years, I was going to have to pay back relocation. Lo and behold... I'm leaving about 18 months in not two years, not the full 24 months. Lo and behold, they done revamped the system and we don't got to pay back relocation. You see how God is like ordering things for me, you know, handling things for me because I'm preparing myself, because I'm still taking those steps, because I'm still walking on faith. God is preparing my path for me. You know, it's like, you know, if you're, he's laying a brick by brick, you know, the brick may not be there yet, but as I'm taking a step, there go the brick. It's ready for me. I don't know where I'm going, but 
the Lord is leading my path. That's all it is. Like, I'm literally operating off of faith. I wanted to add in these tweets last night as I was, like, sitting and thinking, like, dang, I'm about to be at my last day. I was, I tweeted and I said, it's crazy how when you're down bad, you literally think there's no coming back. Like, there's no hope. But boom. But then, boom, God says, not my child. And all of a sudden, your world has changed for the better. Like, that's literally what happened. Like. I'm unemployed, but I'm so happy. I couldn't. Oh, I can't. Oh, my God, you guys. Oh, my God. I could shout. If I had a wig on, I would snatch it off and throw it across the room. Because that's how excited I am. Like, I'm just so excited to be free, to not be bound, you know, to not be obligated to anybody. I put myself first. Like, please, I beg of you, put yourself first. If you have, you know, if you're unsure of what to do and, you know, maybe sit down with your parents. Your parents are, let's talk about this. So, recently I told my mom, you know, she's, my mom, she's always, like, super helpful. She's as helpful as she can be. Um, but she was, like, suggesting jobs. She might, my mom really might, like, hate me for this part. But um, she was, like, suggesting jobs to me. And I was getting, like, frustrated with her because... It was like, I was like, mom, I told you, you know, where I wanted to be, you know, or where I saw myself. There's a path that I see myself going down. And she was sending me jobs that did not align with that. And I told her, I was like, you know, I feel like you're not listening to me. And it's not that she wasn't listening to me. She's just like trying to help me. And I told her, I was like, you know, I'm not just going to take a job just because it's a job. I've done that already. I took a job to say I had a job, to have money, to have benefits, and where did that get me? I quit. So we're not doing that again. I know what it's like. And I told her, you know, if I wanted to stay at a if I wanted to work a job I didn't like, I would stay right here. You know, it's no need for me to move all the way to North Carolina to go be unhappy again. That's not, that doesn't make sense. I did this to give myself the opportunity to find better to find out where I'm meant to be, to find my purpose. You know, I like I said in my Get Ready With Me video, I'm finding out that me sharing, me making YouTube videos is a part of my why. You know, I've always wanted to have a blog. I've always wanted to have a YouTube, something. I've always wanted to have something, an outlet that allowed me to share. And now I have it and I love it. I love when I post a video and you guys are telling me, you know, I love this. I felt like this. You know, I've been there before. I love all of that. If I could dedicate 100% of my time to just creating this, I would. But I can't do that right now. But we're going to speak it into existence that it's going to come. That this will turn into an opportunity for me to generate income. It's going to happen. We just got to be patient. In the meantime, we're going to figure out where we're going next. But... I think I explained everything else in this video. If I didn't, while I'm editing, when I go back and edit, I will, if I feel like I missed something, I will add it in. So if I have on a different shirt in this video, that's why. It's because I felt like I was missing something. But you guys, um, I am just so happy. Like, I can't say that enough. I feel great. I feel good. And you too can have your happiness too. You just have to figure out where it is. That's all it is. Just figure it out, guys. It'll take time. It took me a year, almost. I posted, um, you have to go see my Instagram post to see what I'm talking about. I posted something in June, um, like a little meme, a little, a little meme or something back in June saying something like, it doesn't matter how money, how good the money is if you hate it, basically is what it said. And that was in June. This is April, so... It took me almost a year to figure out what to do. And it's, don't rush the process. Just stick with it as long as you can. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. But God's got you. And don't forget to pray. This might be the time you need to pray the hardest you ever prayed. You might need to get down on your hands and knees and anoint yourself with oil. Because you need God to come through for you. Because there's no need for us to be our 20s. Are the time when we're supposed to be working our butts off and being happy and being young, you know, so that when we're older, we can say we lived a good life. You know, or when you look back and you're 30, 40 with kids and married, are you going to be able to look back and say, job well done. I am so fulfilled with what I've done. Or are you going to say, damn, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done this. You got to figure out what, you, what life you want to live. I know for me, I want to look back and be like, dang, I live good. 
you know, I, I made, I did, I chose me. I chose me every time. You're allowed to choose you. If anybody ever told you, otherwise they lie. You're allowed to choose you every single time. Because at the end of it, all you got is you. So, I think I'm done, guys, you know. I think this is it. I think I said all I needed to say. So, um, I will see you guys next time. And, oh, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you're feeling me. Alright guys, I'll see you later.